Okay, we will try these examples. Okay, number one. Water flows through a 3 inches diameter of pipe at a velocity of 10 feet per second. Okay, find the area, uh, find the volume flow rate in cubic, per, uh, cubic feet per second and in gallons per minute. Then, we also have to get the weight flow rate and the mass flow rate. In this case, in these um, sample problems, if you remember in your fluid mechanics, this was discussed in Chapter 8, the steady and compressible fluid. So, uh, you can just directly substitute no, the, the values once you already get the, okay, the formula okay, for the, for example, for the volume flow rate. The formula is just equal to the area of flow times the velocity. And for the weight flow rate, the formula is just equal to the, the unit weight or the specific weight of the fluid times the area of flow times the velocity. And for the mass flow rate, is equal to the density of the fluid times the area of flow times the velocity. Okay, for letter A... Since here, the pipe is considered flowing full. So, the area of flow is just equal to the area of the circle. So, you have pi over 4d squared. And since the problem ask you to get the volume flow rate in cubic feet per second and in gallons per minute. So, you have to express your answer um, in, the, uh, in cubic feet per second and in gallons per minute. However, for the volume, uh, for the weight flow rate in letter B and for the mass flow rate in letter C, there's no unit specified in the problem. So, if you are going to to answer also, uh, this will be in newton per second or in kilonewton per second. So, it is acceptable because there is no specified unit in the problem. And also, in the mass flow rate, if your, if your answer will be in kilogram per second, it is also acceptable. Okay? For number two, the, uh, for, uh, in the figure, the inside diameter of the pipe is 12 inches and 18 inches at sections 1 and 2. So, your pipe is like this. So, it is increasing. No, from 12 inches to 18 inches. And we let this one as our section 1 and this will be our section 2. If water is flowing in the conduit at a velocity of 16.6 feet per second at section 2, find the velocity at section 1. Then, the volume flow rate at section 2, at section 1, then... The volume flow rate at section 2, then the weight flow rate and the mass flow rate. So, you have so many things to be answered in this problem. So, at first, you are going to look at what are the given values. So, you have here the diameter and, uh, of, uh, at section 1 and diameter at section 2. So, in that case, you can apply the first principle we had discussed earlier, which is the continuity equation, which is said that the mass flow rate in the path of flow of fluid in 
the pipe are equal that the fluid that is going in or the flow the flow the mass of flow rate that going or that enters the pipe is also equal to the mass of fluid that is going out of the pipe so we have q1 is equal to q2 so in that case you can get the velocity no because here um the velocity at section 2 is also given so you can get the velocity at section 1 so once you have now the velocity at section 1 so you can get the flow rate at section 2 which is equal to okay so they are equal so the, velo the volume flow rate of section 1 is also equal to the volume flow rate at section 2 so next is to get the weight flow rate so since you already have your velocity at section 1 so you can get now the um, weight flow rate of section 1 and of course, you can also express this in Newton per, uh, that is weight flow rate. So, uh, weight flow rate that is supposed to be, this is pound per second. Or you can express it in Newton per second or in kilonewton per second. Also, for the mass flow rate, you can also express in kilogram per second. Okay, so because there's no required units in the problem. For number three, okay, a gas flows through a square conduit. So, you have here a square conduit and... Uh, the area of flow is just equal to the area of the square so the area of the square okay so the side is 0.1 okay this is the sides of the square so the area is just equal to 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 so that is the area of the okay the area of the square then the velocity is 7.55 and uh, okay, you have to take note that the fluid here is gas. No? You have to take note. Okay. So the density, you have to know the density. Then the, okay. So this will be your, um, so your square conjoint, no? So here, uh, point one and at second point, okay. If this is the, okay, if that is the, so you have here. This will be your section one, and this will be your section two. So this is the cross section. Ah, oh, sorry. And it is increasing. So, okay, if this is, uh, that is from 100, okay, that is from 100. So, this is your section 1 and this is your section 2. So, this will be the cross section of your pipe. So, here you have... A small conjoint okay this is point 0.1 point 0.1 and this is point 0.25 and you have point 0.25 is that correct then the velocity at uh, also given uh, the velocity is okay v1 is also given and the velocity of uh, section 2 is also given so now uh, 
We are going to find out the mass flow rate of the gas and its mass density at the second fluid. So, at the second point. So, you have to remember that the fluid here is gas and gas is a compressible fluid. So, the density is not constant. So, that's why the row there, okay, the row is not equal so that's why you are going to get the density at section 2 which is in kilograms per cubic meter per second okay so i hope you remember so what are the points you are going to take note for number three so for number three you have to identify what type of fluid if it is gas or liquid for liquid that is incompressible fluid so the density are equal for gas that is compressible fluid so the density is not equal so you have to remember okay for number four okay i have to erase this one for number four, the flow rate of air moving through a square conduit, a uh, square duct, is 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters. Um, the Q is 160 over cubic meter per minute. What is the mean velocity of the air? So, since given the Q is given and the area of flow is also given so what you have is q over a so the answer is this one for 640 um, meters per minute or 10.7 meter per second okay then number five and eight inches in diameter horizontal pipe is attached to a reservoir as shown in figure if the total head loss between the water surface in the reservoir and the water jet at the end of the pipe is six feet what are the velocity and the flow rate of the water being discharged from the pipe okay so here we need to do energy equation from section one and section two so considering head losses Okay, considering head loss, again, uh, total head loss between the waters and the reservoir, okay, the target is 6 feet. So, it is said that the total head, head loss, so the difference, so the pressure head at section 1 is from here, from the reference datum is 15.5 uh, feet. So, here, the difference between the pressure head of section 1 and section 2. The pressure head at section 2 is equal to 0 because, uh, why? Because it is exposed to, uh, since you discharge into the air. So, it, there, is, there is equal, it is uh, exposed to the atmospheric pressure. So, this will be your head loss. So, Okay, so here just head the total head at section 1 is just equal to the total head at section 2 plus head loss. So what how the total head is equal to P1 over gamma plus V1 squared over 2G plus Z1. So at section 1, that the total head at section 1 is P1 over gamma plus V1 squared over 2G plus Z1 is equal to the total head at section 2, which is P2 over gamma plus V2 squared over 2G plus Z2 plus head loss. So, P1, the pressure head is also equal. I mean, I mean the pressure is also equal to 0 at section 1. Then the pressure at section 2 is also equal to 0 from the reference datum. So, what you have is only the elevation. Okay, that is the elevation head from the reference datum of section 1. And the velocity head. Okay. 
and the velocity head at section 2 plus the head loss because there is the velocity uh, inside the pipe. Okay, so your V2 is 24.1 feet per second and your Q is equal to 8.41 cubic feet per second. So, again, what are the principles here? Um, the energy principles, the continuity principles, and the... Uh, did, okay, uh, those are the principles that we are going to use in this problems for number six uh, a turbine is rated at 600 hp okay when the flow of water is 0.61 meter cube per second then the efficiency is 87 percent what is the head acting on the turbine okay you have to remember that the efficiency is just equal to power output and divided by power input since the machine here is turbine so what is the input power of the turbine the input power of the turbine is the flow energy and the power output of the turbine is electricity so what is the head no? what do you mean by the head acting on the turbine so you need to identify um, what power you are going to use no it is the power output or the power input so you try to determine so what is being asked here is the uh, power input of that turbine that is the input head no the input energy okay the input energy of the turbine because the input energy of the turbine is the uh, ano, okay that oh, well, again what is the head acting on the turbine okay uh, it is equal to 85.97 meters so remember that the power input of the turbine is the uh, flow energy Okay.